Hello friends, the Network Berg here, and today I'll be teaching you how to configure an IP address on a Cisco device, as well as on a VLAN. I hope this is going to be something that you enjoy. Um, please, I do encourage you, if you're new to the channel, subscribe to it if you have not done so already. It helps grow the channel, which helps me produce more content like this. Now, without further ado, let's quickly get on to GNS3, which is what we'll use to configure this lab or topology quickly. Um, again, I also encourage people to use GNS3 because you learn better if you actually do things um, yourself. So if you follow along with GNS3, it helps cement the concept for you. Uh, I'll post the link in the description below to the blog where you can go over some steps on how to install GNS3 and bring devices in the way that I'm doing it. Okay, so let's bring in a Cisco router quickly. And I'm going to bring in a Cisco switch as well for our topology. And I will probably bring in a computer just so that we can test from a virtual machine just to see if everything is working. Let's just call this switch, call this R, call this PC. Okay, that looks fine. I'm going to start up all of the devices because the Cisco's do take a little bit of time to boot up. I'm sure you're familiar with that if you've worked on Cisco before. Very great devices, very fast, uh, but a little bit slower than a lot of the other manufacturers when it comes to boot up time, but it is for a good reason. And really you shouldn't just be turning off your devices whenever you feel like it. It's not, it's not a computer. If you have an application issue, don't just restart the router to try and fix it. You try and see on the route for what's going on. Okay, I'm quickly going to connect the ports as well. Let's put the computer in GI03 and let's put the switch on GI00 into the router on GI00. So this is a very basic topology, something that should be quite easy for everybody to understand or relate to, a computer with a switch with a router or router and this would primarily go to your internet. Let's quickly see how far these devices are with booting up. I think the router is actually up already. Very good. I'm just going to bring up the switch as well. Okay, the switch is up as well. Just going to enable the switch as well so that we can configure some things. So let's quickly jump onto the router because this is where I want to show you how to add an IP address directly to an interface. It's quite an easy and quick process. So to add an IP, go into configuration mode, config T. Uh, let's say the router was connected on GI00. So let's go into that interface, int GI0 slash zero, enter. And how do we add an IP? Well, very easily. You can just type in the IP space address. You can tab that command, it's so IP address. If you question mark it, Will give us a list of options and we can see there is the first option which just says a b c d which implies you can actually type in the ip address here so i'm going to use 192.168.0.1 which a lot of you uh, routers would primarily use at a home location or a small office now we need to specify the subnet mask as well if we left it like that it wouldn't actually take it let's see hit enter no it doesn't take it because Cisco needs the subnet. It needs to know uh, which broadcast domain this will be in. So let's just assign this as a slash 24 or 255.255.255.0 and then we hit enter. You can press control Z to leave config mode, save your changes, show IP in brief. You'll now see the IP address here, but if we try to ping this interface on Cisco, it will be admin down, so we won't actually get there. So let's fix that as well, int gi00, no shut. So now our interface will be up. And this is standard with the Cisco router when it comes out of the box. Uh, all the ports are off by default, you need to enable them. Uh, I find with GNS3, whenever you restart a router, you also need to do that, but it, that's not what it's like in, in the real world. I'm just giving you a little heads up. Okay, so we've got an IP address on an interface. So in theory, if I go to the computer and I give myself an IP address here as well, 
192.168.0. Let's make it dot three. Let's make the gateway dot one. We don't need the gateway because we're not going to go any further than this network, but uh, it's just good practice. Okay, let's see if we can actually get to the router. 172, no, 192.168.0.1. Cool, we can get to the Cisco router. So we've assigned an IP address physically to an interface. Let's assign an IP address to a VLAN. And for that, we're gonna use the Cisco switch quickly. So let's go onto the Cisco switch. Let's do show IP in brief. So we'll see all our interfaces. I don't see any VLANs though. And I know that VLAN one is the default VLAN when it comes out of the box. Why is it not showing here? It is actually here. If you do a show VLANs, you'll see it is there. There's VLAN one. It just hasn't been defined as an interface yet. And that's why it's not showing up in our interface list. So we can configure VLAN one as well by doing similar config T go into the interface that you want to configure in this case it's a vlan so type in int or interface vlan and i'm going to configure vlan one in this instance what do we want to do with vlan one well we want to give it an ip address ip address 192.168.0.2 also again we need to su supply the or provide the broadcast domain or the subnet mask. So this is going to be in the slash 24 again. And also with the VLANs, when you configure them, they are also by default shut. So let's just unshut this as well. And you should see on the debug messages, there we go, the VLAN comes up. We need to control Z this, save it. And let's quickly jump back to the computer, see if we can get to our switch as well. 192.168.0.2 Awesome. So now we've configured an IP address on an interface and a VLAN. Uh, there's one more thing that I want to show you before we cut this video off. And that is if we were on the Cisco router and let's say we wanted to configure a VLAN with an IP address there because it's a bit different on the routers. You don't just go into an interface VLAN let me show you what happens. Config T in VLAN 1. It's giving us some errors. Reason being is the Cisco router doesn't understand what the VLANs are. It's a router, it's not a switch. But we can add VLANs on the Cisco router. We can create what we call a dot one q interface on the device where we can assign an IP address. Let me show you by just adding another VLAN quickly. Config T. We'll use the same port that's on the switch, interface GI0-0, because it's already up, so we don't need to unshut it. Actually, let's go one step back, because that's not what we want. We want to go into the interface, but we're gonna create a sub-interface. So let's say we wanted to create something like VLAN 200 on the router. I'll just put a dot there with the 200. Now we've got a sub-interface, so it would be GI0-0.200. So in here, I can actually specify the encapsulation and that's going to be dot one Q. And then we can specify the VLAN ID that's going to be tagged on this interface or on the sub VLAN or sub, uh, sub interface. So let's use VLAN 200 because that's what I made the sub interface. It doesn't have to match, but it is relevant for consistency. If you're gonna make a sub interface 200, make the VLAN the same because then it's easier to remember when you start doing things like dot one oh one and your VLAN is like 50, it, it can get confusing for you. So that made your work harder than what it should be. Okay. Now on here, I can actually add the IP address as well of let's say 172.17.0.1. And again, also the subnet mask, control Z, write it. So let's do a show IP in brief. Now we've got our sub interface with an IP address and it's up and that is a VLAN now. That is actually a VLAN show int. We can see our IP address. We can see it is a VLAN interface 802.1Q and there's our VLAN ID, VLAN 200. 
So if I had VLAN 200 on our switch and on a computer, it would be able to communicate with the router on this IP address, but it wouldn't, well, it, it would, it would st see the other IPs because we don't have any access controllers and routers route the traffic. But if this was in a switch layer, it, it might not work as well. I hope this video has been informative. Again, I'd like to thank you for watching and I do encourage you to like the video if, if you find any value in the content and to subscribe to the channel, it does help me a lot. Thank you very much.